Hello, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And one of the stories that has broken over the last few days is that Apple intend to move away from using Intel chips in its Macs to using ARM-based chips similar to the ones that it uses in its iPhone and in its iPad. And as a result, uh, Intel's share price has taken a dip and lots of people are sort of, uh, sort of talking about what does this mean and, and is it gonna happen and what does it mean for Intel and what does it mean for Macs and what does it mean for Apple and there's just loads of stuff. So if you wanna really understand what's going on here, please, let me explain. Okay, first of all, let's start with a bit of context. At the moment, Apple uses chips from Intel in its whole range of Macs. When I mean the whole range of Macs, I mean you've got Intel chips in kind of the MacBooks and the MacBook Air, so you're talking very thin and low thermal uh, budgets, and you've got sort of lower performance, which is running from a battery, right up to its high-end stuff, the iMacs and so on, that have got sort of fans in them, and there's sort of many, many cores, and it runs off the mains electricity and, and all this kind of stuff. So there's a whole range of different Intel chips used inside of these different ranges of Max. At the same time, it also uses its own chips, chips that it designs. It doesn't manufacture them, but it designs them, okay, inside of the iPhone and the iPad and the, the TV thing and all that kind of thing. So it's got two types of chips. Now, those chips that it designs itself are based on the ARM architecture. Now, when we look at this problem, we need to look at it in three different aspects. The first aspect is the technology. Let's talk about the technology behind this. Secondly, let's talk about the business decisions, about money and things like that. And thirdly, let's talk about the consumer end products, what it means for the consumer. So let's start with the technology. So as I said, Apple uses Intel chips from its laptops right up to its much bigger machines. Now, it didn't always use Intel chips. It used to use uh, PowerPC chips. And in 2005, Apple decided that PowerPC were no longer providing them with the direction they wanted to go, and they switched over to Intel. So from a technology point of view, a switch from one processor architecture to another is possible and Apple have done it before and they know what it means. Then there's a question of performance. Now you certainly could take the current Apple chips and put them into something like a Mac Book Air, and as long as the software has all been sorted out, they would perform pretty well because the MacBook Air is a low performance but long battery life uh, device designed for mobile usage. So in that sense, it's not really very different to what you might have in a big iPad. But the question is, what about the high end? What about all those big iMacs with their huge monitors and they've got dual processors and they've got massive graphics cards and loads of memory and, and Mac, Apple have got so many different types of Macs that you can get from the Mac mini you know, to the iMac and to all these really big ones that they've, they've got in their range. Now, those couldn't be powered by the current chips that Apple have or Qualcomm have, if you're drawing a parallel, that use the ARM architecture. The Intel chips are a different league when it comes to that level of performance. So if Apple are serious about this, it can only possibly mean they are designing a new class of chip, a class of chip that is aimed specifically at desktops and at servers. Now, of course, ARM has been making inroads into the server market. I was at ARM TechCon a couple of years ago, and that's where the whole server thing kind of started off, and companies like HP, and there are some other ones, even Qualcomm now have uh, server chips that are based on the ARM architecture, and they work very well under certain tasks. So for example, if you're serving web pages, you want to be able to do that efficiently in terms of power, you wanna be able to do it quickly in terms of performance, and one way to do that is to have many, many cores, because you're not doing intensive single tasks, you're just serving a web page, you're delivering a graphic, you're running a quick script, you're doing some server-side scripting, talk to a database and deliver a web page, and that's great, and you could do that, and all these server chips have multiple cores, not just quad-core or octa-core, we're talking 16 cores or 32 cores or 48 cores, but it's a very different thing if you were doing aerodynamic dynamic modeling of an aeroplane wing or of a car or of a spaceship and you wanted all that fluid dynamics and all of that stuff going on, you wouldn't do that on today's ARM chips, even on their server chips, because you need some high computing power there that's more in the area of where Intel come in. So when it comes to Macs, if I'm running, let's say, Adobe sort of Photoshop or Premiere Pro, what kind of chip do I need? Do I want a 48 core class chip that can do lots of things quickly or do I want maybe a quad core that's very good at doing sort of number crunching and my initial thinking is that actually the number crunching one is much better for things like Premiere Pro and for Photoshop and from a business point of view would Apple save any money well in the short term certainly no 
they do buy these chips from Intel, so they have to pay Intel for them. Intel make a profit on those chips, there's no doubt about that. But Intel have invested a lot of money in terms of the design and the manufacturing, and they deliver those chips directly to Apple to use, and Apple pay a price for them. And you can be sure that Apple pay a very good price for them. Now, when they manufacture and design their own chip, you have to have your own design team, you have to have prototyping, you have to have sort of production runs, and you have to, you know, and they do all this at the moment for those uh, uh, iPhone chips, but it would be a whole different thing now to move over to a whole second set of chips. There would be some costs involved in that, which would mean in the short term, Apple would not make any uh, extra money. In the long term, if you're talking, you know, three years from now, then yes, that move could save them some money. But let's put it this way, how would it be now in Intel's director's room, how would their response be? Wouldn't it be interesting if we found out that now Apple were actually trying to renegotiate their prices for their chips from Intel? And in fact, this whole thing, this whole rumor has come about again. And I say again because it's not the first time this rumor has come out. This rumor has come about every year. Ever since Apple put that slide up that said, desktop class performance when they launched the A7 processor. Ever since then, everyone's been talking about, oh, Apple could move over to using the ARM chip. So this isn't a new rumor. It's just come about now with some force behind it. We've got some big news companies talking about it. And I wonder whether Apple are not just actually using this to go to Intel and say, now let's talk about the prices that we get for these chips, please. And you've got to remember that Apple is a shrewd business company. It didn't get to the size it is today and the profitability it is today without knowing how to do business and without knowing how to negotiate contracts with its uh, suppliers. And then there's the issue of the consumer side. What would it mean for the consumer? Well, Apple did take its whole ecosystem through this exact same process in 2005 when it abandoned using the PowerPC and moved over to using Intel. So Intel know how to do it. They know what technology is needed. They know what the plan for such a migration would be. But it would certainly be a pain point. I remember I used to own a Mac back at that point with PowerPC into it, and it was a pain point when you were finding out that actually the next version of the software only worked on Intel. It was no longer supported on PowerPC. And it forced me to actually abandon the PowerPC. And at that point, I moved over to Windows. I abandoned Mac and moved over to Windows. So my question is, in a shrinking market where people are buying less desktops, people are buying less laptops, people are buying less Macs, why would you put your consumer base through that pain when actually, if they've got to sell up and sell their PC or just throw it away at, at their Mac and actually buy something new, well, like I did back in 2005, I didn't then buy another Mac, I bought a PC instead. So actually, the consumers aren't necessarily guaranteed to follow. So when you put the consumers through pain, they're not necessarily guaranteed to stay loyal to the brand. So there we have it. There's a technology point of view, there's a business point of view, and there's a consumer point of view. Could Apple do it from a technology point of view? Yes, they could. Could they do it in the high end? I'm not really sure. Would it make sense from a business point of view? Well, at the end of the day, it might make them a bit more money, but in the short term, it would cost them. But then there's the whole issue of, are they just putting pressure on Intel for the prices they want to pay for those chips? And finally, for consumers, there would be pain, and there is a big risk of consumers abandoning the platform at that point, because if they've got to buy new hardware and buy new software and buy new things anyway, well, why don't I just go and buy a Dell Ultrabook or a Lenovo Ultra? book, why do I have to stick with Mac? Why don't I go and buy myself a high-powered desktop? Why do I need to stick with Mac? So there is that issue as well. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Please tell me in the comments what you think about this whole rumor and is it possible? Also, please do give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please hit that bell notification icon and please share this video on social media. Well, that's it. So I'll see you in the next one.